What are the tactics, routines, and habits of billionaires, icons, and world-class performers? We're going over that in this week's book review, Tools of Titans. I, I heard it came out, and I immediately drove down to Barnes & Noble. I walked into the store, picked it up off the shelf, went to the counter, and checked out. And the guy's like, man, this must be a good book. What's up? It's Clark from ClarkKegley.com. Welcome back to this week's book review where we take the best books in the world on self-development, personal growth, business, finance, anything that's going to take your life and elevate it, we're covering it on this channel. Before we get into this awesome book, Tools of Titans, Tim Ferriss, one of my favorite authors, I just wanted to remind you, in the comments below, remember to leave your best idea, the thing that either stood out from these ideas or something you took away from this video. Two, add in something I forgot, or three, something you disagree with. Post that in the comment down below. It's one of the best ways to learn. Let's dive in now to the best 10 ideas from Tools of Titans. Big idea number one, model the masters. Look, it's one of our favorite quotes on this entire channel, success leaves clues, Jim Rohn. What would happen if we were able to tap into that same blueprint that same roadmap. If you find the blueprints for someone who built a five-story mansion, it's all the same. You just got to assemble the materials and put the effort in. So how can we get the blueprints of success and apply that in our life, put the work in, and achieve the same result? You model people. Success leaves clues. If you can figure out those clues and piece them together yourself, you can achieve similar results in your life. There's entire books about that, taking the most successful people in the world and trying to distill down how they got there. Big idea number two. The first profile is Derek Sivers. This man sold CD Baby, the online music store or distribution company, whatever you label it, for over $22 million. But one of the best things he said, the quotable that really just, I laughed my ass off when I heard it, is if information were the answer, we'd all be billionaires walking around with six-pack abs. Love that. Basically saying like, look, it's not enough to just read. It's not enough to know. We have to do. He also gives a story that I absolutely love. Don't be a donkey. The hell does that mean? The donkey is standing in between a bucket of hay and a bucket of water. He keeps looking left and right. Hay, water. Hay, water. Not knowing which one to go for, he ends up dying of thirst and starvation right there in the middle. Because the donkey didn't realize that if he went to the water and drank, he'd have enough time, plenty of time, lifetimes, to go back to the hay and eat. So he got overwhelmed and just stood there because he couldn't make up his mind. He didn't see that he could do one and then the other. We can't be that donkey. You know, oftentimes we give ourselves false choices. We say, should I go to college or not? And we don't realize that we have time to do both. You do have time to go to college and then pursue entrepreneurship or traveling or whatever. I did the exact same thing. Or we say, should I quit my job or become an entrepreneur? Let's use, let's keep going with this. We don't realize that you can do both. You don't be the donkey in the middle choosing between A and B. You can start a job part-time and do entrepreneurship part-time. And sometimes that's the most successful way because you have steady income coming in and you're also pursuing your passion and you're more driven because you go to work every day thinking, I don't want to do this forever. And so that's a great way. And you don't go crazy because you have all this time and nothing's catching on, catching on, catching on. This false choice between should I do A or B, try and see the middle path. Try and say, why not both? And stop giving yourself false choices. Love that story. The third idea, this is Tony Robbins. Talked about Tony tons of times on this show. One of my personal heroes someone who really helped me when I was 14 to now. I keep coming back for the last really 10, 12, 15 years. So some of the best points he went over that our brains are 2 million years old and they're not all designed to make us happy. They're not designed to make us really fall in love. They're designed to make us keep us alive and make us survive. Tony Robbins says that the reason we're suffering, the reason we're depressed, the reason we're fill in the blank is because we're focused on ourselves. That's a great statement right there. Because you can think back in your life, you know, even if we're focused on, oh, my kids aren't going to be enough, it's still about you. Your kids aren't going to be enough because you want to look good. You want to be a successful parent that raises successful kids. So suffering comes from a me focus, an us focus. Suffering comes from three words, loss, less, and never. Afraid of losing something, 
suffering comes from that, right? That's what Buddhist texts tell us, that suffering is desires and attachments. Uh, less comparing keeping up with the Joneses, right? Oh, he's got a new Mazda, so if I want a new Mazda, I'll be as good, or he's got the new camera, or whatever degree this goes on. That's a big one. And never, it's never going to happen for me. That's the doom and gloom. Things are never going to change. I'm never going to find love. I'm never going to get in shape. Insert your blank there. The suffering comes from those three things. And ultimately, that's all coming back to us. Another point Tony gives that I love and will end it on is that if we are suffering, if we are in that state of where we're lost less never, don't try and solve a problem in that state. OK, that's a very doom and gloom place to be. You'll only see problems. So what I tell people when you go into your journal right here, never journal in a state of where you're feeling sad, down, depressed, because I can tell you what you're going to write in that journal, what you're going to write on that piece of paper right there isn't going to be too pretty. It's going to go down the rabbit hole of that path you're on, doom and gloom, lost less, never. So what you got to do first is you got to get in a good state. You got to feel positive, do something to move, uh, take a cold shower. It's a great way to do it. Take a sauna, go on a run, do jumping jacks, jump on a trampoline, something that gets you in a peak state or a positive state, then start going into the problem solving state first, then the story you're telling yourself, then the strategy. So with the state, we went over that. You got to feel good to have good answers. If you feel like shit, you're going to get shit answers. All right. Then it's the story, the story you're telling yourself. Think about a time you just got broken up with or you just broke up with someone. Even you might be in that loss, less or never state, right? It sucks. It hurts. It's terrible. And if you can't, if you try and solve in that state, what are you going to have? I'll never find love again, or they were perfect, or I lost them. Um, or I have less than my friends who are in successful relationships. Why aren't I in one? Why not me? So that state's terrible. Don't solve a problem in there. What if on the other end, you were in a peak state and you just went on a killer date. You just went on, you know, you found someone, you really hit it off. You're going to come up with different stories, different strategies down the road because your state's totally different. Can't solve a problem with the same thinking that created it. Big idea number four. 1,000 true fans. This is Kevin Kelly's concept that says success is overcomplicated a lot of times. When you simplify it down, all it really matters is that you make a 1,000 people extremely, extremely happy. It's so sexy to go after 100,000 people. Sell your product to a million people for a dollar and you'll be a millionaire, right? Or get a million people on your Twitter page or Instagram page, Facebook, YouTube, X, Y, and Z, and try and sell, 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 sell and go after the masses. What this concept is saying is that's the wrong approach. You'll spend more time, energy, effort doing it that way a lot of times, and you won't make people as happy when you skim the surface. This concept is saying go after a thousand people. You get these thousand people to spend a hundred dollars on your products every single year. That's all you do. You make a thousand people happy. You got a six figure income. Don't you think it's easier to make a thousand people extremely, extremely happy? You know, three a day, focus on three a day. And over a year, make six figures. Then if you try to do if you try to do a hundred thousand people uh, for a dollar. So what is a true fan? Kevin Kelly says a true fan is someone who will buy anything you produce. They'll drive two hundred miles to see you sing. They'll buy the hardback, paperback, and audiobook. They'll buy the best of DVD. Someone who follows you on every social network. Now, the best thing of this is you say, oh, God, I have to get a thousand people. I'm, I'm, I might be starting with 20 or 100 or 10. That's OK, because if you focus on making those 10 people extremely happy, they end up doing the marketing for you. You know, my girlfriend's parents just absolutely love, love, love Dave Matthews. Right. Um, they're obsessed with him. They go and they buy every single thing. They have artwork. They have albums. They have all this stuff. And they tell all their friends about it. And then their friends start getting into Dave Matthews. And it grows and grows and grows and spreads really, really fast. You see how that works. It's kind of that viral effect that when you make 10 people happy, they tell all their friends about it. I got a hair products company and most of our sales in Seattle come from word of mouth. Most of our, our, our uh, big wholesale orders come from word of mouth. And so it grows beyond us because we're making those 10, 20, 100 people extremely happy and it catches on. The moral of the thousand true fans don't try and make every single person like you. Focus on that select few tribe, that exclusive tribe. Give all your time and energy to them, and the rest will follow. Big idea number five, 
This profile is on Wim Hof, the Iceman. Awesome, awesome guy. Uh, he holds over 20 world records, mostly pertaining to ice and cold exposure. Um, he climbed Mount Everest past the death zone where, you know, I don't know what the percentage is off the top of my head of people die. You know what he did it in? He didn't do it in the Canada Goose jackets or the oxygen tanks or, you know, what most people go up on of like North Face just decked out head to toe insulation. He did it in just shorts. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Wim. So I was doing my research and looking at his world records and he had one for an ice bath. I think it was one hour and 58 minutes was his time. I, was, I asked him, I said, Wim, why didn't you just do two hours? That would have been way better. His response was, oh, so I can do it for an hour and 59 next time and break the record and then two hours and break the record. He knew he had it in the bag, so he just wanted to one up it by a minute every time. Uh, it's kind of a publicity, good strategy, Wim. Anyway, he went over the breathwork strategy he does to get himself in state for doing deep dive underwater below dozens of feet of ice or summoning Mount Everest. He teaches people how to do his strategies and uses methods. So here's a clip of him doing the actual breath work with me, and you can do it along if you want to in this video. Go. Just do it. Just do it, Clark. We do it for one minute, uh -huh. and then you will be able to stay without air in the lungs for two minutes. Okay. I'm going to time it. All right. I'm going to time it here. All right. Yeah, follow uh, along at home. Yes. Yeah, I ju just follow it at home and copy Clark. Okay. All right. I got a stopwatch here. Okay. I'm going to show you the principle. <clears throat> okay. There we go, man. Okay. I'm ready. ready? Yeah. Relax. Okay. Good. Deeply in. <sighs> Once again, deeply in. <sighs> Let it go. Deeply in. <sighs> Let it go. And deeply in. <sighs> Let it go. Keep on doing this. Keep on doing this. You become lightheaded, loose in the body. That's okay. That's the oxygen beginning to roam freely throughout the body. Keep on, keep on. Deeply in. I'm just explaining to people at home what happens. The carbon dioxide goes out now. Oxygen begins to roam freely throughout the body. pH levels go up. And when the pH levels go up, they, then you don't need to breathe anymore. And we will show it. We will show a piece of magical physiology. Just keep up. Last 10. Yes. Nice one. Let, deeply in. And let him go. And let him go. And deeply in. Oh. Oh. And deeply in. Let it go. Yeah. Light headed, loose in the body, tingling, all that. Whatever you feel, intensify that feeling. Physiologies, paleophysiology. Get into it. Three more. And deeply. Yes. Okay, last one. Letting go. I'm showing you. No breathing. Shut your mouth. And relax. Just relax. The oxygen in the body is, has uh, risen, the pH levels. So you don't need to breathe. We show all the world that the magic of the physiology is happening. And it brings you right in the deeper parts of the brain. Right now, you feel like peace. This goes up to cell level and relax. You don't need to think, just 
Get into whatever you sense. Just be there. Just witness the physiology. Paleophysiology. Right on. So you passed one minute now. And still without air in the lungs. It's because the, pH, the chemistry is right. One fifteen, and still ongoing. Right on clock, one thirty. Those are reflexes, conditioned, conditioned reflexes. One forty. You're getting there. 45 reflexes 150 almost two minutes right on good dude good man get him in get him in get him in get him in and hold and now press a little bit toward the head. You feel great. Wow, man. Being in the brain, man. <laughs> right on. <laughs> you see? <laughs> no ego, see? then we go. Sir, yes, sir. Just listen to the inner nature and it's all going to happen. Oh, my goodness. Woo. It is. That's it amazing. is just oxygen, and uh, oxygen bringing uh, uh, back the control of the right pH levels in the blood. Wow. And that things happen. Things happen in the depth of the brain and the body. Wow. Love that guy. Awesome dude. Moving on to point number six. Tools of Titans was originally in an audio format over a series of, I think, 200 podcasts Tim did on his Tim Ferriss show phenomenal show. You'd always have these closer questions that are just phenomenal and we'll go over a few in a bit. I started to use some of these closer questions on my friends. I started to use these closer questions in my journal and I got a lot out of them. So I wanted to share the best eight of them with you now. So the best eight interview questions that you should answer in your journal or you can ask your friends if you want to spice up a little holiday party or whatever. Number one, when you think of the word successful, who's the first person who comes to mind and why? Number two, what is something you believe that other people think is insane? Number three, what is the book you've given most as a gift? Number four, which purchase of $100 or less has most positively impacted your life in the last six months? Number five, what does the first 60 minutes of your day look like? What are your morning rituals? Number six, what is the worst advice you see being dispensed in your field? Number seven, what advice would you give to your 20, 30, or 40-year-old self? Number eight, what have you changed your mind on in the last few years and why? Whew. I mean, answer two of those, you're going to be needing an hour or so. Feel free to post a uh, comment of one or two of those in the comments below. Love reading them. Love engaging them. Big idea number seven. Let's profile Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin's been called the most influential music producer in the last 20 years. He's worked with Jay-Z, Lady Gaga, Slayer, Black Sabbath. Huge, huge, huge resume when it comes to successful artists. How do you get out of writer's block? Right? You're working with Lady Gaga, Jay-Z, Black Sabbath. It's not always just boom, 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 hit, hit, hit. I mean, there's times where it's extremely hard. And he would talk about these artists and how they struggled. And, you know, your self-esteem is tied up in your work and you feel like you can't. It's all gone. It's all you know, creative energy sucked out of you. How do you get it back? Rick Rubin said he had a foolproof, failproof way of getting these artists out of writer's block. He said, look, what you're going to do when you go home is you're going to write one word. Just one. That's all I want you to do. Sit down, write one lyric. And if you do that, write one line. And what you'll notice is that naturally, he didn't tell them this, but what they noticed is as soon as they wrote one word, the line followed. Then the paragraph followed, then the structure followed, and pretty soon they had a next hit single. It's the same thing with artists who were playing guitar. He said, look, I don't want you to do anything. All I want you to do is go home and play one note. They said, one note? That's nothing. Are you kidding me? There's like dozens in a chord alone. He said, just one note. And then they played one chord, 
and then they wrote a verse, maybe a bridge, chorus, and pretty soon they had the instrumentals for their song. Love that, because if we're getting overwhelmed, you and I, just take your task, ignore the the big idea of it, and simplify it down to the smallest bite-sized chunk, the smallest domino to call that back. Do that one thing, and then the rest is so much easier to follow. So for you, maybe you're trying to write music, play one chord, write a book, write that one sentence. Maybe you're trying to do a YouTube channel, film one video just for yourself. Trick yourself into starting small, and that's a great way you can achieve big results. Point number eight, eight surprising habits of the ultra successful. These are eight themes that the ultra successful have in common based on Tim's uh, research in the book. They are 80% of them had some sort of daily mindfulness practice. A surprising number of males didn't eat breakfast. They used the chili pad device for cooling bedtime. They loved these books, Sapiens, Poor Charlie's Almanac, Influence, and Man's Search for Meaning. Five, they listened to a song on loop or a song anchor like we've talked about on this channel. Very good. Six, they invest their own money and own time or spec work on projects before making a dime. Seven, They believe that failure is not durable. Eight, almost everyone was able to take an obvious weakness and flip it into a strength. Links for all those products are in the description below if you're curious and you want to check them out. Big idea number 10, there are no failures, only outcomes. A lot of stories about people who would have been failures by society standards, but they pushed through it and they achieved massive results, massive success. They overcame the struggle. They had the mindset that this too shall pass. Failure is not durable and that there's really no failures because we learned something. There's only outcomes. Seth Rogen, the guy who wrote Superbad, remember that movie? Said it took them over 10 years to get that movie approved and finish the script. And that if you saw it at the beginning stages, it would have been the worst movie of all time. Tim Ferriss wrote the 4-Hour Workweek, consistently been on the New York Times bestseller list. He said he got turned down by over 20 different publishers before he got one yes. Love the story about Colonel Sanders, you know, that he went knocking on doors for his fried chicken recipe, got turned down a thousand and nine times before someone finally took him up on his recipe. Can you imagine that going around a thousand different times? Knock, knock, knock. Want to buy my chicken? It's the best in the world. I don't want any money for it. Just give me a part of the proceeds and I'll give you the recipe. And you get a thousand no's before you get one yes. So all those people kept had that perseverance to push fast and make it a success. All these people knew that there's no failures. There's only outcomes and that success. We got to push past these blocks. We got to keep going. We got to persevere and achieve our massive results. That's it guys, tools of titans. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a big thumbs up right down below. Be sure you subscribe if you're not on this channel already. Remember to leave a comment in the description with your best idea, something you wanna add or something you disagree with, I wanna know. If you're looking for a place to really get these ideas down on paper, there's no better place than your journal. That's the number one thing we talk about on this channel. How do you use journaling, not as a diary, not as some, I saw a boy, I kissed a boy, X, Y, and Z, but how do you use it as a tool for your personal growth to achieve goals, take your life to the next level, and really keep yourself accountable, coach yourself. We came up with the system at mybestjournal.com. 300,000 people have seen the videos by now. It's insane. Thousands of people have gone through that course alone. Going to make tons of changes this year in 2017 to it. I'm very proud of the community we have over there. That takes you start to finish everything you need to know on how to use this journal to coach yourself and turn yourself into an action taker, achiever, and success doer. There's also the 11 best questions to change your life, a free ebook I put out to go in your journal if you want to just get a jump start right there. Uh, These are just simple 11 questions you can answer that really make an impact change and can influence your life. That's all I got. Until next time. Stop settling, start living, see you later.